Howdy there, YouTube. This is Ben Ferriolo once again, and this is going to be a quick overview of literally just one thing. Um, I'm Ben Ferriolo, and thank you for watching. And by the way, if you have not seen my last two-part video, Amateur Seismology Basics, Misconceptions, and Tools, please go watch part one and part two. Especially part two, it shows you how to download seismic data and input them in brand new... Well, they're not really brand new. To me, they're brand new, but uh, and input them into new seismic programs for analysis. Programs such as Swarm and Waves are a lot better than Jama Size for anything. All right, so let's go check this out real quick. So we don't have much activity except on Maple Creek and Holmes Hill and a few other surrounding seismographs. I noticed this one thing. Jeez, if it will pop up, it's one seismograph. There we go. Notice this right here. Now let's see if I have it pulled up. That's this right here. I'm in the process of determining what the hell this was. Um, for the small magnitude that it is, it doesn't look like the amplitude is that strong. So it seems like it could be a little more long period of an earthquake than what we are used to seeing in regards to amplitude size. So I'm still studying this right here that just happened at 755 to 756 UTC uh, today. Uh, that's not what I'm talking about though. So I want to go back. Okay, I want to talk about this real quick. You see on Nor YNR, Norris Junction, do you see this right here? It looks like some type of tremor, right? Well, we go on YNM, and it's not here. So it's not, it has nothing to do with Steamboat, guys. Um, so let's go to Borehole 950. It shows on Borehole 950, I think, a little bit better than on YNR. So it only shows on two seismographs at all. And this has been going on for a few weeks now. Let me go into the calendar real quick. Yeah, see right here, right here, right here, right here, here, uh, right here, here, and multiple other days. Let's see if I can go back two weeks. And yeah, it's been happening a good amount lately. So I, I really wanted to do an analysis and kind of show you guys what's been going on. Because I noticed some people have been questioning whether this is harmonic tremor, volcanic tremor, anthropogenic noise. Anthropogenic noise just simply means it's caused by humans. Um, or if it's part of steamboat or I don't know. But what I wanted to talk about is the waveform characteristics of this event. And at the end of this video, I will put up two audio files of this quote-unquote tremor in question. And I'll be using borehole 950 as an example. And real quick, here are the two examples I'm going to use. Borehole 950 for July 25th from 1830 UTC to 2130 UTC. And then I'm going to use again borehole 950, but for July 27th from, I think it's about 14 UTC to about, eh, from about 2000 UTC. So I'm going to use those two as an example, and YNR right here, these are the same days, just showing you that it was picked up on two seismographs. That's it, guys. It is not being picked up on any other seismographs, but B950 and YNR. So we need to go check that out real quick. Now, real quick, I want to show you the distance between these stations right here. Now, here's y, the location of YNM, YNR, and Borehole 950. This is the Norris Junction area, guys. And I think Steamboat Geyser is somewhere right in this area, right here. It would make more sense if Steamboat was right around in this area. Because when the seismic trace is picked up on the seismographs, it shows, it shows strongest on YNM, Norris Museum. It shows second strongest on YNR and barely is ever felt on Borehole 950 for some weird reason. Now, the University of Utah said this is because of, possibly because of certain bedrock, but they said they don't know exactly why it's not showing on Borehole 950 for the steamboat eruptions. So right now, it is only showing the tremor that I'm going to be talking about. It's not really a tremor, but that's what I'm just going to call it, just for you guys. Um, it's only showing on Borehole 950 and YNR, and it seems to be showing the strongest on Borehole 950. So let's check the distance factor real quick. Get the ruler out. Uh, we're in miles. Let's go from here to here. That is almost a mile. A little less than a mile. And then from Borehole 950 to YNM is about 1.67 miles. So a little over a mile and a half. And this is a little less than a mile right here. So YNR is pretty close to Borehole 950. Next, I'm going to be showing the waveforms of, let me get it up, I'm going to be showing the waveforms of the July 25th event 
first, and then I'm going to show the July 27th event second, and then at the end of the video, I will put the audio file so you can hear the audible frequencies of this event, and you can pretty much hear that it's not coming from underground, guys. If it was coming from underground with this strong of an amplitude, it would show on YNM and a couple other the surrounding stations. It would, guys. So I'm thinking this is definitely some type of anthropogenic noise, some type of noise caused by human intervention, and to me... When you see the waveform oscillations I'm about to show, it looks like they are drilling, guys. I don't know why. I haven't heard of any drilling that they should be doing there. I don't know. So let's check it out. All right, here we are in the seismic program called Swarm. Now let me real quick find the file I want to use. For some reason, my computer is acting very slow right now. There we go. And then go to Yellowstone. This is all my research, guys. See this? All my research. And this is a specific Yellowstone folder with multiple events from the 17th, 13th, 12th, 11th. I'm looking over a lot of stuff right now, guys. But let's see, where is it? It was the YNR Borehole 950 folder. There it is. All right, so I want to look at the first one, which is the 25th, not the 27th, which is the 206th day. Which, that's why it says 206 right there. All right. All right, here we are. Now, let's elongate them just a little bit. All right. First, I want to go to wave settings. Make sure I'm going to keep persistent rescale just to keep a good eye on it. Let's see. Auto scale. Log power. Okay. I think that's all good. Let me change this real quick. Two, one. Okay. All right. Now we got the waveform analysis right here. Okay. Here we go, guys. Look at that. Now I want to zoom in real quick. Let's zoom in on this section right here. And then zoom in again. Look at those oscillations. Look at that. Okay, now I want to show you something real quick. Let's go to Google. Now, I don't know what the importance of this is. I just find it a little bit interesting. And my internet's acting slow too, so just bear with me for a second. Or maybe more than a second. Or maybe more than a minute. Wow, Google, really? Google, go, hello. Oh my god. <laughs> there we go. Sine waves. All right. For some reason, whatever this is, is a sine wave. All right, here we are on Yahoo instead of Google because for some reason, Google did not work. For some reason, it just kept freezing, but every other website worked. Okay, so this is a sine wave. I don't know the importance of it or why it's looking like this, but does not look similar to this. And this, yeah, it's a sine wave. So we do have sine waves coming from anthropogenic noise. Now, what type of anthropogenic human-caused noise can cause a sine wave? I'm thinking maybe a drill, possibly. But then again, it's too perfect. I'm thinking maybe a generator, possibly could be a generator. So because it's like this throughout the whole thing. Look, and then look down here, and then and then it just ends. So let's zoom in a little bit again, and zoom in again. Yeah, those are sine waves, guys. I don't know why they're showing up here. Um, could be from a generator. But then again, how could a vibration from a generator uh, travel over almost a mile? Remember, because Borehole 950 is about a mile from YNR. And plus, Borehole 950 is about 100 to 200 feet underground. Of course, it could still pick up strong surface noise, of course. As we learned in the previous videos that I just talked about, vibrations from the ground, above ground, are actually quite strong and can penetrate into the ground. But of course, underground events such as earthquakes, tremors, stuff like that underground will always be the strongest. That's why they show up on surrounding stations. That's why in order to filter out uh, microseisms and surface noise, you just compare it to the surrounding stations, especially the closest station. And let's do a quick frequency check on this, on the spectrogram. And it carries about 5 hertz. Total of about 5 hertz, but it doesn't go below. It doesn't go below about 4. So it's about 4 to 5 hertz, and that's it. And then it's done. All right, let's look at the next one real quick. I'm going to go up here, close files, and then open the file. Let's see which one was it. It was the, this one. All right, let's look at this one too. As you can see, we do have some more sine waves for some weird, odd freaking reason. I don't even think a generator can cause this. It's definitely not coming from underground. So what are they doing 
near Borehole 950 in YNR. This is definitely not some type of construction, so I don't know. If anybody out there knows what the hell they're doing, look at that. Look at the almost perfect oscillations. That is pretty weird, guys. And let's do a frequency check real quick. Same thing from about 4 to 5 hertz. Very interesting. Very interesting. And then it stops, and then we have it again. Now, I'm about to show the audio to these two, quote-unquote, tremor events on Borehole 950 and YNR. I'm going to call it a tremor. It's obviously not coming from underground, but I'm going to call it that because I don't know what the hell to call it. So I'm going to show you, while you hear the audio, the seismograph that you see during the audio is the seismograph in question for that audio clip. I'm going to show two. And I will have a red arrow from the time frame at the beginning to the time frame at the end, showing the entire time frame of the audio clip. And I'll do that for both. All right, so here we go. Let me know what you think. And by the way, this is the end of the video, so I'm not gonna be talking anymore. By the way, please go check out my new two-part video. Please go check it out. For some reason, it's only gotten 190 views or so within the past couple days, which is odd. Because usually I get, you know, a thousand or so views, and I don't care about my other videos. The, the part two video that I made had a lot of information about the new seismic tools, and I was really trying to get that out there to people, you know, so that other people who do YouTube videos about Yellowstone and stuff could use new seismic tools to break down certain events that they talk about better. Because the detail of these seismic programs are amazing. And so here we go.